sit with the legs apart. You can sit on a height if that's helpful. Just try to sit high enough that you're able to get the pelvis fully upright. <clears throat> stretch out your legs, spread your toes, stretch your heels. Take a belt, you have a belt, and put that around the left foot, left forefoot, and hold the belt with your left hand. <clears throat> and turn your chest a little to the right. Walk your left hand a little closer to the foot and then turn your chest back to the center. At that point, you should have quite a bit of traction on that left shoulder, left side of the shoulder girdle. <clears throat> Try and move your trunk, meanwhile, away from the foot to increase that traction. And then Rotate the left upper arm, left humerus, outward until you feel the top of the shoulder blade drop down the back a little. You can also use the forefoot, moving the forefoot toward plantar flexion to increase the tension on the belt. that, switch to the other leg, so hold as close to the foot as you can without leaning way over in that direction, then turn the chest to the left. That's going to bring your shoulder a little closer to the foot, so walk the hand in and take up that slack, and then turn the chest back to center. And you should feel at that point the pull mainly on the back, so the shoulder blade is pulled as far out as possible. Then you're trying to move your trunk away from the foot and you're using external rotation of the right upper arm to release the trapezius tension across the top of the shoulder. that and come off the height bend your knees and do a boat pose Navasana 
Be sure to get the head back in line with the spine. Breathe into the lower abdomen. Then take your left foot under your right knee, come on to the left hip. Place the left hand about two feet away from the hip in the line of the hip. Step the right foot back. Stretch the right arm out from the shoulder girdle. And try to create a similar stretch as to what you had when you were holding the belt and pulling on the foot. Try to get the shoulder blades as wide as you can and rotate the upper arms out enough to get the shoulder blades to move slightly down the back. and bring the right arm forward. You want to take your right knee behind the left foot. Bring your left hand a little closer to the hip and then push down with your knees and your feet and with the help of your left hand, lift the pelvis up off the floor. And then lower the pelvis back down again. So you want to be sure that that's not causing pain in your knees. If it's, if it's causing pain in your knees, don't, don't keep doing it. But you should be able to um, limit stress on the knees by using this left hand support. So you, if you can get up, then you can come off the hand. So you're just up on your knees here. And then you're lowering the pelvis back down, using the hand as much as you need to. So that should work for most people. As long as the hand's there, you don't overload your knees. But then you can also start to work on trying to go down and up with less support of the hand. So your hips have to do more of the work. And that's where you want to start to be real attentive to what's going on in your knee joints that you don't put a torque on the knee to do that, to make that transition. And then go back to Navasan. So again, we want to try to get the head back. Tendency is to line up the head with the wall in front of us and we want to line up the head with the spine. Eyes can orient to the front but don't let the head orient to the front. And then your right foot under your left knee and you're onto the right hip. Place the right hand Step that left foot back and you're stretching your left arm away from your right arm or away from your, out from your shoulder girdle as I like to say. And you're reaching as wide as you can both from the front in the pectoral area as well as in the back. So the shoulder blades are moving as wide apart as possible. And then the upper arms both rotate out to release the shoulder blades slightly down the back away from your neck. Bring the left 
hand forward. Bring the right hand a little closer to the hip. Then push down with, uh, sorry, bring your left knee behind the right foot. And then you're pushing down with your knees and your feet and with your right hand to lift the pelvis up. So first just that motion. So you're testing it to make sure that when you do that, it's not hurting your knees. If it's hurting your knees, then don't keep doing it. But assuming it's not hurting your knees, then once your pelvis is off the floor, you can come all the way up off the hand. And then you can slowly lower that back down. And gradually you can begin to decrease or even eliminate the hand support. Good. Then from there, come into a supine position. Support the head if you need that. And breathe into the lower trunk. Then look to your right, bring the right arm down, and come back up into side sitting on the right. And then again, step the left foot back a little further so your knee is behind the right foot. So you can get both knees on the floor here, that's the idea, to be able to push both of your knees down and then you're unweighting that right hand a little trying to come up off the pelvis and then your left leg you're going to step forward and around so you end up in this uh, lunge <clears throat> and then this transition or this sequence is more familiar. You're sitting back toward the heel. So again, you want to protect the knee here. So just go a little bit at a time. And if you start to feel it's too much load on your knee, stop. Don't keep going. And then from there, you shift your weight forward into your left hip. And that's going to register as a feeling of pressure in the left groin. So that's how you're, you know you're getting load in the hip. You're going to feel that pressure in the, pretty deep in the left groin. Make sure that your upper back and your head aren't collapsing down here. So I like to use my fingertips at first and work my palms down gradually as my hip can accommodate more bend. Then you're going to upright. So that motion is around the right hip. When you sit back toward the heel, keep a neutral spine. So don't go so far back that you end up rounding and tucking your pelvis under. Keep a neutral spine, that'll help to help you to find the right range, the correct range. And then when you come forward, the pelvis and the trunk stay at the same height relative to the floor. And you're just shifting the load from your right quadriceps into your left hip. 
And when you're upright, you're shifting the load into the right hip. So now it's my right hip that's supporting. Then as I sit back, that's my right quadriceps, right knee. And then as I come forward, my left hip. Then bring the right hand down, lift the left hand, turn to your left, and step out of it with the left foot. Bring the right knee forward, and then go back to your supine position from there. So this time we'll transition to the left. So you look to your left, bring the left arm down, and then come it up into side sitting on the left. <clears throat> Step the right knee behind the left foot so you can have both knees on the floor. Bring more weight into your left hip, which will bring your left hand a little closer in. The right arm is more forward here. And then you're pushing down with your knees, lifting the pelvis and coming up. And then here's the tricky part. You, you've got to get enough support from the left hip to unweight the right leg and then step that foot over. So you end up in this lunge with the right foot in front. Make sure when you're here that you don't have the right foot so far forward that you have a lot of weight in that leg. You want to feel like the bulk of your weight, almost entire weight actually, is in your left hip. Also the left knee should be slightly wider than the left hip. Likewise, the right knee, the right thigh bone angles slightly out. Then you're sitting back carefully. Make sure you don't overload that knee. And then coming forward and bringing the weight into your right hip, which again, you're going to feel as pressure in the right groin. And it's fine to take the hands down more, but make sure you're not doing that by just rounding your upper back and hanging your head forward. Then when you upright, try to feel that motion as a rotation of the pelvis around the left hip, left thigh bone. So again, most of the weight, pretty much all the weight is on that left hip here. And then you're sitting back, that's going to load the quadriceps. Keep your spine neutral, don't round your back. And then try to keep the pelvis and the trunk at basically that height as you come forward into the right hip again. And again, uprighting. Sitting back. and shifting forward. Uprighting, sitting back, and shifting forward. Now from the tripod, step the right foot back into quadruped, and then walk the hands forward into a kneeling plank really push down and lift the chest and lift the head here. Don't let the upper part of the spine fall forward. And breathe into the low back, 
completely relax the buttocks, completely relax the hamstrings. Let the tailbone release down. Let that whole lumbar area, posterior pelvic area, let that whole area open up. And then squat back from there. So you want to take a quick peek at the knees. Make sure the knees are a little wider than the hips. Feet a little narrower. And then as you go further back, keep your spine neutral. Use your intra-abdominal pressure to keep the lumbar spine stable. So it's all about flexion of the hips and shoulders. Chin tucked in, neck long. And then come forward and just let the pelvis rotate posteriorly through that whole transition. So you don't end up with hyperextension in your lumbar. Breathe into and activate the lower, the lowest part of the lower abdomen here. And then once more back. more forward. Now keeping the angle of the spine the same, basically the pelvis stays in the same position, you're going to step the right knee about halfway up toward the right wrist, and then push down with your left hand and unweight the right hand Stretch that hand back alongside the hip with the palm facing up. Then bring your attention to the space between the left shoulder blade and the spine and try to lift and open that space more. Then bend the right elbow, rotate the forearm so the palm faces up, rotate the upper arm so the elbow comes in near the chest and then carefully reach that arm forward. Then bend it, rotate it opposite, reach it back alongside the hip. Bend it, rotate it, reach the arm. Bend it, rotate it, reach it back. Bend it, rotate it, reach it forward. Then bring that hand down and step the right knee back. And then once more, squat back with your hips. And back to kneeling plank. Now it's the left knee stepping about halfway up toward the left wrist. So you should be able to unweight that left hand and stretch it back alongside the hip, the palm facing up. Meanwhile, find the space between your left, your, excuse me, your right shoulder blade and the spine and lift that space up. Lift and open it. Then the left arm, you're going to bend it, rotate it externally, and reach it forward. Bend it, rotate it internally, reach it back. Bend it, rotate it outward, reach it forward. Bend it, rotate it back. Bend it, rotate it out reach it forward and bring that palm down, step the left knee back, squat
squat back one more time. And come part way forward, bring the hands a little closer to the knees, turn the toes under, lift the knees up, come up into bear. Make sure the knees stay out, keep supporting with the arms, the chest, the shoulder girdle, keep the head down. And walk your hands in towards your feet and squat for a few breaths. And then come all the way up. Release the arms. Let the breath recover. Stand with your feet pelvis width, spread the toes apart, see if you can expose the sticky mat the, so you can see the mat between each of the toes. Breathe into the lower back, release the buttocks, lift up through the crown of the head, then push down with your forefeet and lift your heels off the floor. And once the heels are off the floor, seek to balance the weight evenly between the big toe ball and the small toe ball of each foot and to maintain that as you increase the height of the heels as well as as you lower the heels back down to the floor. And then repeat that a few times using as little momentum as possible to lift or to lower. So momentum lifting is kind of a weight shift. So momentum when you lift is you just kind of swing your weight, your hips come a little forward, that allows you to unweight your heels to come up. And you want to try to avoid that. You want to see if you can use the, the downward push of the forefoot to lift the weight rather than using that, that little swing forward to do it. And then of course using or not using momentum to come down basically means you're doing it slow enough that you're controlling the descent and you're not letting gravity just drop the heels for you. Good. Now take your half tone or whatever you're using and put the left forefoot on the half dome adjust the position of the right foot so you have some amount of pull or stretch on that left lower leg but it doesn't you're not uh, feeling any excessive tension in your low back. So a lot of times what can happen is if we try to bring the opposite foot too far forward, we end up going into the low back to get that foot forward. And then if you sort of bring your rib cage and your lumbar spine back to a more vertical alignment, you'll be forced to move the right foot further back to let that happen. 
So pay attention to where you put the right foot. It's not all about trying to get as much stretch in your left calf as possible. It's also about trying to stand in a functional way while having that left ankle more flexed. Then stretch the left arm forward. Reach a little to pull the shoulder blade away from the spine. Externally rotate the upper, or really the whole arm. Slightly bend the elbow. And then move that arm laterally. And as you do that, make sure that the shoulder blade stays as wide as possible while you lengthen out the pectoral area in the front. And try to use rotation of the humerus to continue to release the trapezius area across the top of the shoulder girdle. Breathe into that left side. Good, release that arm. And switch legs. Stretch the right arm forward. Again, reach a little to pull the scapula wider. Then rotate the arm out as much as you can. Slight bend to the elbow. That's particularly important if you tend to hyperextend your elbow. It's less important if you don't hyperextend. And stretching laterally. So ask yourself, can I, can I stretch the pectoral area as much as possible without narrowing the space between the shoulder blade and spine in the back? Can I rotate just enough to release the top of the shoulder blade slightly down, which is just enough to take some tension out of that upper trap? Good, release that, release that leg. Um, let's stretch the top of the foot, so uh, left toes back. And then you can also lift that left arm up. Try to lift the arm without lifting the ribs or without elevating the shoulder blade. Keep the weight in your right heel here. Don't let the weight creep forward into the toes. Keep the weight in the left heel. Watch the ribs, watch the shoulder blade. So ribs anchored to the pelvis, shoulder blade anchored to the ribs. Good, and release 
release that. Now trikonasana. So arms forward, step the feet apart, slight bend to the knees. Hips are a little bit back. Pelvis is tipping slightly back, or as I like to say, you're uprighting, you're uprighting the pelvis to the rib cage. So you should feel a lot of activity in the lower trunk, a lot of stability there. Then you're turning to your right. Align your heels, align your right knee, stretch your legs, stretch your arms, lift up your spine. Inhale, exhale, bend to the right. And reach down with that arm, reach away from the right arm with the left arm. And as you stretch that top arm, anchor through the left leg, upright and turn the head around to the left. Keep rotating the right thigh bone out. Don't let the thigh bone roll in at any point. Direct the breath down into the pelvis, particularly into the, 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 so the anterior portion of the posterior pelvis. Good, and come up and reverse that. So again, stretch the legs, stretch the arms, lift up the crown, inhale, exhale, bend, reach down with the left arm, reach out and up with the right, reach through the back leg, reach out through the crown of the head as you turn. Keep the upper arms rotating out. Shoulder blades slightly down the back. Shoulder blades as wide apart as possible. to the front of the sacrum. Good, and come up, turn that foot in, step the feet in, release the arms. Good, take your half dome again. Put both of the four feet on it. Keep your hands alongside your hips. Hip hinge forward. Stretch the hands away from the head, head away from the hands. to the low back. Try to open it up a little. And come up slowly. Step 
off of the height. Good. Take a block. You can also use the half down. And again, separate the feet, maybe slightly less wide compared to Trikonasana. You can hold the block out in front of you. And then you're turning to your right here. So you're in a lunge. If possible, have the, the left heel off the floor so you can bring the left hip around. Hold the block with your left hand. Make sure the right thigh bone, right knee is rotating out and not in. And then stretch the left heel back and down as much as you can without pulling the pelvis back with it. So you're just stretching the leg. Meanwhile, just keep turning the pelvis around to the right. Then straighten the right knee and bend around the right hip. Bring the right hand down using the block. Once you have the support of the floor via that block, then use the arm to help upright the head and then start turning the trunk around. Then bring the right hand out into your field of vision. At that point, think not about trying to open up the right side of the chest, but more about trying to open up the left side. And what I mean by that is that you're not trying to take the right arm further back, you're trying to turn your chest further away from your left shoulder. So a lot of it is the downward pressure with your left hand and that pressure facilitating the rotation of the trunk to the right. If the right arm gets more vertical, that's because your chest is turned more and it shouldn't be because you're just throwing the right arm back behind you. Then turn and look down bend the right knee, and come up, and then reverse it. So you've got the left knee forward angled out. The right heel is up. The right hand holds the block. The pelvis is turning to the left. Then stretch the right heel back and down as much as you can without pulling the pelvis with it. So neither do you want the pelvis to move back with the right heel, nor do you want it to rotate to the right. You want to keep turning the pelvis to the left. Then stretch the left knee, straighten that knee, and around that left hip, bend and rotate and bring the right hand down and when you can make contact with the floor assuming you can do that then use that support to upright and turn the head and then bring the left hand out into your field of vision then work on trying to turn your chest away from your right shoulder so it's this bottom shoulder where you're, you're turning from, not the top. Breathe into the lowest part of the lower abdomen. Activate that area. Keep the left knee very straight. And turn and look down, bend your left knee a little, 
and then come up and back to the center. And then go ahead and step in and come out. Good. So one more forward bend with your feet flat. If you want to, you can just keep holding the block. Hip hinge forward. And if you can reach the floor with the block, go ahead and do that with your knees straight. If you can't quite do it with your knees straight, you can bend the knees a little and then put the half dome on top of the block and then straighten your knees. So this is just about adjusting your height. And then use the hand support to help upright the head to keep that upper part of the spine from rounding forward. And then at the same time, push into the block, activate the lower abdominals, lift the sit bones as high as you can, and gradually tip the pelvis and the trunk more forward here. As your flexibility in this posture increases and the trunk goes lower, more and more the weight of the trunk is used to increase the, the forward fold. In other words, as you get lower in the posture, the, the posture starts to make a little bit more sense. Let your eyes soften, relax your tongue, relax your throat, let the inner ears soften and deepen. Before you come out, unweight your hands and use the legs to lift you up. Take whatever time you need to let the breath recover. You can stand with your feet pelvis width and then bring your feet a little closer together. Push down, you want to keep your knees straight here, push down with your left leg, left hip and lift your right heel off the floor. And if you're able to balance on one leg, you can also just flex your ankle and lift your forefoot also up. So I'm balancing on one leg, but I'm keeping my right knee straight initially. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, pulling my knee up right away. And then once I have the stability to do that, so that's, that's, so you got step one and step two here, right? Step one is just using your hip strength to get your heel off the floor. That's step one. And that's just the mechanics of how you load the hip. Step two is lifting the forefoot and standing without the support of the right leg. Step three is lifting the right knee up without bending your left knee. And step four is bringing the heel, the right heel in toward the 
left leg and then placing it on the leg. And so I'm able to get my foot pretty high here. I have a lot of flexibility in my quadriceps on my right side that allows me to do that. But if your quads are tight, you might find you need to keep the leg lower down because the tension in the quad won't allow you to bend the knee that much. And so the common, the, the frequent comment here is that, well, I don't have enough traction of my foot on my leg. It's really not the traction of your foot on your leg, it's the tension in your quadricep that makes you feel like you can't keep your foot up there. So working on your quad length will help you a lot in having the foot higher, which will help you to get more opening in that right hip. Then bring your hands to Namaste. Push the palms together, widen the shoulder girdle, the chest and the upper back, and raise the crown of the head up. You can use the palm pressure to help facilitate all of those things widening and lifting. And then try to drop your breath down into the pelvis. And then go ahead and step that foot down. Just stand for a moment. Now you're going to push down with your right leg, the knee is straight, and you're lifting your left heel off the floor. So for the newer students taking this class, that's the, that's the step one, that's the important step one. You need to feel how your hip needs to work to weight bear on one leg. And once you can do that, lifting the left forefoot and balancing that's the next step. Then without bending the right knee, you raise the left knee up. Then you raise the heel up and place that foot on your leg. Wherever the quad length, again, wherever that dictates. Hands to Namaste. And you're actively pushing the palms together here and using that palm pressure to help widen the upper back, chest, shoulder girdle, and to help lengthen and lift the upper part of the spine. If you know, balance is difficult for you, then you can always stand near a piece of furniture or a wall so you have something to provide some stability. Try to drop your breath down into the pelvis here. And go ahead and step that down and release your arms. All right, so we'll use the squat to get down. So you're squatting, going into bear. And then from bear, Stretching the legs into downward facing dog. So in the previous pose, I was describing how you can use the palm pressure to widen your shoulder girdle and your chest and also to help extend the upper part of the spine and, and create a more sort of upright quality to the upper part of the spine. You're doing the same thing in downward facing dog, or at least you want to do that. So, the difference is, is that you're not pushing the palms together like you were in Vrikshasana. Now you're pushing the palms down into your, into your mat. So try to feel that, that you're not just resting on your hands here, 
you're actively pushing and that active pressure is both helping you to widen the shoulder girdle and lengthen the upper part of the spine. If all you do is just kind of brace yourself with the arms and you're not actively loading the arms and the shoulder girdle, then what happens is you just start kind of sinking into your shoulder joints and the shoulder girdle is essentially just collapsed and just hanging from the shoulders. And you want to actively load it so you're supporting and stretching. You can also think of pushing from your hands, trying to push your heels down. So the heel goes down more as the arms stretch and the shoulder girdle opens more rather than just from the stretch of the lower leg and the hamstrings. And then you can bend the knees and come back to bear for a moment. Then really push with one arm, whatever arm is opposite your, your computer. Push that down, lift the arm closest to the computer, turn, and then bring the hip down, and then you're back to side sitting on whatever side that might be. And then from side sitting, you can go back to supine. And just pause there for a few breaths. And then go ahead and come down and rest. Now lying on your back, take your block and put it under your pelvis. You can start with the lowest height of the block. And you want to make sure that the, the height of the pelvis is such that it's tipping the pelvis toward the rib cage. Then rotate the upper arms out and draw the shoulders a little further back and try to make contact between the back of your shoulders and the floor so you can push the shoulders into the floor and stretch open the upper part of the chest. Now when you do that, there's a very strong tendency to push your lower ribs forward. Some of that is unavoidable, but you want to try to minimize that as much as possible. So try to get the shoulders back and if you see the ribs start to creep forward, then pause when you notice that and let the ribs drop a little without uprooting the shoulders. And then take the shoulders a little further back and then release the ribs again and so on and so forth until you can learn to isolate that back bending action in the upper chest from any kind of a back bend in your lumbar. Then if you feel that you can comfortably raise the height of the block either to the side of the block this way, or if you have a block that's stable enough, like a wooden block or a very dense foam block, and not those sort of cheap hollow ones that a lot of us buy, then you can even go on to the top of the block. Right? If you feel that block is not dense and sturdy enough, then don't use the top of the block because the block will just kind of collapse underneath you. In which case, don't go any higher than the, the side of the block. Also, don't go all the way up onto the top of the block if you're already really struggling with that height. If, you know, if you're not real tall or you're not real long in the, in the torso, then the side of the block is probably better. Then lift your feet up 
and stretch your legs straight up toward the ceiling. Feet are a little bit separated. Your knees are as straight as possible. And you're, you want to continue to push down with your shoulders and lift and stretch open the upper part of the chest while any amount releasing the lower ribs down toward the pelvis and a little bit in toward the spine. With practice, you can start to use, realize that you can use your diaphragm to keep the ribs more stable. Your diaphragm, your abdominal muscles, and your intra-abdominal pressure will help you to keep the rib cage more stable, the lower rib cage, as you continue to increase your back bend in the upper chest. Try to direct your breath down into the pelvis and to even use your intra-abdominal pressure to push the pelvis into the block and then from that anchor point st stretch the legs up, reach the legs and the feet toward the ceiling from the pelvis, from the anchored pelvis. Then go back to the shoulders, anchoring there raising the chest, dropping the ribs, anchoring the pelvis, stretching the legs, anchoring the shoulders, lifting the chest, dropping the ribs, anchoring the pelvis, so on and so forth. So your cues the actions that you're employing in the posture become like a mantra you're using to keep you present in the posture. So you're aware of what's happening from one moment to the next. Now slowly, carefully bend the knees, bring your feet back down to the floor. And if you did raise the height of the block to the top like this, go down to at least the side of the block. Try and keep your chest open here. And then walk your left foot out along your mat, away from your head, to take that left hip toward extension. Make sure that the left leg doesn't drag the pelvis in a way that it creates a lot of arch in your low back. In fact, try to minimize any arching in the low back as much, if not more, than you were doing that in the previous posture. Meanwhile, begin to soften and release tension from your sense organs and your vocal organs. inner corners of the eyes soften and deepen. Let the tongue relax, throat relax, jaw relax. Let the inner ears soften and deepen.
bring that left leg in and do it on the right side, recognizing that the two sides are always at least a little bit different from each other. Therefore, approach each side on its own terms. Soft eyes, soft ears, soft tongue. Meanwhile, remain very attentive to what's going on on that right side. Make sure that any load you feel is loading the hip and not the back. Good, and bring the right leg back in. If you're up on the side of the block, come down to the lowest height of the block. If you're already on that height, just keep the same height. And then very briefly bring your knees towards your chest. Just enough to release the lower back for a moment. Breathe into that, stabilize that and maintain that stability as you bring your feet down to the floor. Then remove the block and lower the pelvis. At that point, you can add some height under your head, a half dome or a blanket, something that helps to slope the forehead more down toward the chest. Let the low back rest into the floor for a few breaths. Adjust the shoulder blades down and apart. And then one at a time, stretch out the legs. Keeping the chin tucked in, raise the head briefly. And look down and see that you're lying symmetrically and adjust the body accordingly. And then bring the head back down. And then start to relax. Let your eyes close. And begin to go inside.